Welcome to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. I'm your host, Molly Watts. If you want to change your drinking habits and create a peaceful relationship with alcohol, you're in the right place. This podcast explores the strategies I use to overcome a lifetime of family alcohol abuse, more than 30 years of anxiety and worry about my own drinking, and what felt like an unbreakable daily drinking habit. Becoming an alcohol minimalist means removing excess alcohol from your life so it doesn't remove you from life. It means being able to take alcohol or leave it without feeling deprived. It means to live peacefully, being able to enjoy a glass of wine without feeling guilty and without needing to finish the bottle. With science on our side, we'll shatter your past patterns and eliminate your excuses. Changing your relationship with alcohol is possible. I'm here to help you do it. Let's start now. Well, hello and welcome or welcome back to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast with me, your host, Molly Watts, coming to you from, well, guess what? It's been a rainy Oregon. That's right. I know. I've been going on and on about how perfect it's been, how splendiferous it's been, how torrid it's been. And over the last three days, we've been rainy just a little rainy. And you know what? It was kind of nice. It was kind of nice. It made me think, okay, here comes fall a little bit, which I'm not really ready to turn the season dial to fall yet. But it was just a little glimpse, right? And you know how that rain kind of feels good when it's been, been warm? And I know the hot days are coming back. So probably I feel peaceful because I have seen the forecast for the end of the week and we're back up into those high 80s. So I'm okay with a little rainy Oregon. How are you doing? How was your more dry July? This is dropping on July 31st. It is the end of the month. I hope that you were able to prioritize adding in some alcohol-free days from wherever you have been. And I hope that it went really great. Those of you that are in my Facebook group know that I uh, had a stumble in my own alcohol-free plans. Now it's not a big stumble. I had planned for 25 days. I actually got 24, still more than I typically do. But just like you, I have thoughts that I need to manage around alcohol. And on last Friday night, I allowed that lower brain of mine to give me all the permission giving thoughts as to why it was okay to uh, have a beer. And I did. So that's what I did. And then I had to reflect on that. And, you know, it's, it's just how we decide to make goals, whether or not they align with who we want to be and how we want to show up for ourselves. And I talked about it, like I said, over in my Facebook group. If you're not there already, I really want you to come and check it out. It's the Alcohol Minimalist. Just go to Facebook, look in groups, and there we are. Hey, I've got two prize winners before I get going with this week's episode. The first is the random prize winner. And this prize winner left a comment on YouTube. It is Sortega0927. Sortega0927. You left some comments regarding the Hoplark interview. And so, I, and you talked about how you were a big fan of those products. I love that. And you are my random prize winner. So Sortega. 0927. And my chosen prize winner is Rain Cats. Rain Cats, you also left comments on Spotify. Your comment was just simply in all caps, brilliant about the how to eat to change how you drink with Dr. Brooke Scheller, that episode. So thank you both for listening and email me molly at mollywatts.com. And I will be happy to send you out some alcohol minimalist swag. Today on the podcast, I am talking to Chris Whalen. And Chris is the founder of and person in charge of Nama CBD. I have had so many people talk to me and ask me questions about cannabis products and whether or not I believe that you can use them. If you're having an alcohol free day, would it be okay to have XYZ? 
of course, here in Oregon, it's legal here. I mean, marijuana is legal here in in Oregon. But Chris and I uh, sat down to have a conversation about Nama CBD, about the difference between hemp products and marijuana products, and about you know about including products that have both CBD and THC, which is the psychoactive part of a product like these, like Nama, like gummies, like you you hear about. And I just love the story behind Nama. I love Chris's kind of perspective on this and where he's come from and why he believes so strongly in this industry and what he's what he's able to do for people. So I think you are going to really love this conversation. Here is Chris Whalen and Nama CBD. Hey, good morning, Chris. Thank you so much for being here on the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. As I told you briefly before we jumped on, I've had uh, so many people talk to me and ask me about THC, CBD products that include them and how how I feel about it and what I think about it. And it's I've wanted to have this conversation. And you guys, I found your product and I loved the story and you are my very first (laughs) honorary, you know, uh, recording guest that's going to be here and talking about products that you have produced that include CBD or, and THC and kind of how you got started in this and why you got started in this. And I love the story. So welcome, Chris, tell me all about Nama. I should have even asked that. I didn't ask. Yes. Thank you so much, Molly, for uh, for having me. It's definitely an honor. And I, I know, I, I guess I'm I'm the first THC CBD company you're having on, but I, I'm, I probably won't be the last because I think we're really starting to see what I guess sometimes I call the green wave hitting the US. And I think these products are going to become much more popular and much more mainstream and much more normalized, uh, to say the least. But um. But yeah, if it makes sense, I'm happy to just kind of dive right yeah, in. Yeah, please, please yeah. do. So tell me a little bit about you. Tell me where this journey started for you. And, you know, yes, and I agree with you. I think it has become more normalized. And I, what I really liked about Nama was the fact that you had both products, both products that contain only CBD, products that have both CBD and THC, and you really seem to uh, align with an alcohol minimalist lifestyle. So talk to me a little bit about where this, this idea came from your story. And let's talk about that and share that with my audience. Exactly. So it actually, it, it starts a while ago, actually when, when I'm, when I was a kid and obviously I think no one should consume these products until you're 21 or older. Um, but of course my story really did start when, when I was a, a teenager and obviously I was just yeah, typical high school kid exploring this and that. And like, yeah, you have that one party a month where you try a little alcohol. And then there were also those times where, yeah, I, I tried cannabis. Mm-hmm. And every time I tried, I was like, hmm, something is here. I, I, I always found like when I would go home, I would either like stay up all night, like listen to music and and things like that. Or uh, even like at the time in high school, it's funny before this journey, um, I was very interested in art and architecture. So I'd find myself even going home and, and drawing and things like that. Cause in high school, uh, for my college studies, I had to put together a portfolio and whatnot. So I, I found something was always there. And uh compared to like alcohol growing up, it's like, okay, it's a thing that makes you silly and you have fun and laugh. And and uh, but I was always intrigued. And at the same time, I, I was uh high school, I was very involved in sports and uh playing football. And I was found like, yeah, like. I get beat up at games, this and that. And, but when I consumed, I was like, Hmm, I I don't feel as crumb. Uh, There's something here. So that was kind of my first introduction being like, Hey, like there's something about this plant. I'm intrigued by it. I kind of enjoy the feeling I'm getting, but, um, but of course in the back of my head, I knew smoking, not good. Um, Obviously inhaling any form of smoke, um, is going to cause damage. It's yeah. Yeah. Um, and then went on to college and of course, same thing, um, exploring here and there. And then junior year of college, I was actually diagnosed with cancer. So being a college kid, it was like, Oh, smack in the face. Definitely was a, a wake up call. And at that time, a friend of mine, um, actually it was the first time I was introduced to CBD. I knew, okay, there's weed, 
THC, right. it gets you high. Um, and that's kind of all I knew about it. And um, someone introduced me to CBD and I was like, I first thought, this is snake oil. Um, I, I was like, there's no way this does anything, this or that. And I tried it. And I was like, wow, this isn't. Again, there is something here. And that experience was the first time that I kind of started diving into the medicinal side of cannabis. I'd always explore kind of the recreational side, but I hadn't focused on the medicinal side. So I went down a rabbit hole of just trying to learn everything and anything about this plant. And then at the same time, I was going through, um, uh, I, I'd been diagnosed with cancer. I was going um, through that. And I would actually a series of light bulbs went off during that process. And like one thing was I'd be in uh, the hospital and I, I remember turning to my mom once and making a joke being like, something's kind of wrong with this picture. Um, I'm, I, I'd be like, mom, like they're giving me all these pills. I feel like it's going to give me cancer a second time. Something's wrong. I understand we, we, there's a lot of things that you need to have, but there's a series of things that, Hey, this causes that side effect, which causes that side effect. And it's like, hmm, you shouldn't have to take a medicine to counteract another side effect of something else. There, there's something weird here. And I shouldn't have to be taking a white pill to calm my nausea or something like that. Why are we taking? So I was like, hmm. So actually during that time, same thing. I was exploring and really go deeper and deeper down, um, down, uh, what I call it, I guess, the, the medicinal rabbit hole. And um and the whole time I was like, hmm, something is here. Um, and then after college, um, I got very serious about health because I was at the sickest I'd ever been in my life and then um, wanted to become the healthiest I've ever been in my life. So I, I uh, started competing in weightlifting competitions and basically took a year off after college and got very serious. But I was training seven, eight hours a day, beating up my body, and then counting every calorie I put in and turning to these products for um, recovery. And at that time, um, really, again, diving into more than just THC, because I recognize at this point, cannabis isn't always about getting high. There's a lot more to it. And I think that is a huge misconception with this plant is it's almost like if every time anyone drank alcohol, you got drunk. And it's mm -hmm. like people only drank to drink. And I don't think that's the case. And I think most people would agree that is not the case. Most people don't drink to get drunk. Well, and I don't know. I'd, I'd tell you that I get a lot of people telling me that that we that's one of the things that I actually I I really truly believe. I believe that if you are still trying to drink to drink drink to get drunk, you're going to struggle to reduce your alcohol intake. You're going to you're going to struggle or you're going to it's going to be a challenge to adopt an alcohol minimalist lifestyle. I absolutely 100 percent agree with you that you can include alcohol in your life or you can drink to not get drunk. I don't I don't drink to get you know, I, in fact, really believe that that when we start to I mean, it's when we get altered that we start to not make great decisions. Right. I mean, that's what, what typically leads to that. So, yeah. And so that's again, why I think there's some, so why I am very eager or excited to learn more about both. I, and I, I really, like I said, I appreciate that because I, um, even when I have a small amount of THC, it, 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 it feels to me like I can feel the altar. So I, I'm excited to hear how that, you know, what you think about that too, but let's go keep going. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yeah, and I think that's also so many people's first experience with cannabis is that like drunk experience. It'd be like the first time you ever tried alcohol, you drank a lot of it. And I think a lot of people, the first time they try anything in the cannabis realm, they try way too much of it. Because also, obviously, in this realm, and I'll talk about this down in a little bit, it is very, very easy to overconsume mm -hmm. um, on the cannabis side, especially with the the form of consumption. And I think that is so many people's first experience. So in this journey, mind, I, I was exploring the side of not consuming until you get high and exploring the cannabinoids that didn't provide those psychoactive effects. So then, um, so then after, um, after uh, college, then I was training for a bit. Then after that, um, went to law school and was practicing as 
an attorney and uh, same thing, working a hundred something hours a week, very busy. And um, sometimes at night, my mind be racing and I just need something to turn it off, um, just to calm, relax a little bit, um, but also be able to wake up the next morning at 6 a.m. And again, at that time, uh, same thing, I found uh, exploring CBD, very low dose THC products, and not, not high dose where you're getting high, but very subtle serving sizes was very beneficial. And I, I was always that kid that my whole life, I was like, I want to start a company. I was always that kid, the shark tank one, <laughs> writing down all the different ideas, but nothing ever excited me. Nothing I was very passionate about. And um but the plan, I realized it was something that even in my free time, I wanted to learn everything about. And it just made sense. I find these products have helped me throughout many stages of my life. Why don't I start sharing these with others? Um, so I started making products, sharing them with friends and family, and the response was great. Um, so I was like, why don't I take this to another level? So I left my job and started what became NAMA. And um, and what I said is basically different different effect based edibles for different times of the day or experiences depending what you're looking for because I I like to think Nama kind of straddles both sides almost like my background I've been explored cannabis recreationally and I also explored cannabis medicinally and I like to offer that and what I would say is Nama is an extension of myself these are products that I've made for myself and that I consume myself. And that's why I feel comfortable sharing them with others. Awesome. And so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Nama and about the different products that you do offer. And, you know, where did you start with these when you first started deciding to market them to uh, on a bigger scale? What was first? And and tell me about where that has led. Yeah. So what's funny is actually... Um, so I, I would obviously bring these products to friends and family and uh, someone that was extremely helpful in um, designing my branding and kind of the focus of the company was whenever I brought something home, my mom would be like, well, what does it do? And I'd be talking about CBD, THC, CBG, CBN, all this. My mom would be like, I don't know what that is. What does this do? And that was mm -hmm. always her question. Like, I just want to know what does this do and what is it for? And that's when a light bulb went off is that most people don't really understand this industry. What is the most approachable way and easiest way to help people understand this industry? So that's when I decided I really need to have approachable branding mm -hmm. and branding that told the customer within a split second of looking at it, what does it do? What is it for? And um, then the next thing is I understand that people someone might need something, might be looking for something during the day. Someone might be looking for something in the afternoon. Someone might be looking for something a little more recreational. Someone might be looking for something for sleep. So um, the core four products that we originally launched with were our Anytime Relax, Relax Plus, and Sleep Gummies. Because my thought was this kind of covers the full spectrum of the day and builds foundation, hopefully has a product for everyone. Um, and then, of course, as we've gone on, we've expanded into uh, quite a number of products. And uh, really, the expansion has solely been customer feedback, because my thing is, these are products that I like to enjoy myself, but also products that I want to share with others. And that's one thing we do is we really listen to our customers. We constantly survey them, ask them, well, what are you looking for um, beyond just flavor? What are effects? What, what are your pain points? What are you having trouble with? What can we do to help? And what are you looking for? And um, during this time, the biggest thing, because I think, um, and I found this too, is during the pandemic, a ton of people turned to alcohol. Oh, alcohol yeah. <laughs> sales skyrocketed. Right. And um, actually, one of uh, the first products I, I formulated, which uh, this more for updated branding, is uh, our Relax Plus. Because I even found, I was living in Brooklyn at the time um, with my wife, and you could immediately start ordering alcohol to your door from any brewery in New York. And right. there are tons of breweries in New York and just alcohol became so easy, so accessible. So even my, I myself as someone very passionate, I still am very passionate about a craft beer. Um, even though I really don't consume it, I'm more passionate about the hops, the flavor profiles, this and that. Um, I was ordering beer all the time and having two to three a night. 
So yeah. my first thing was, well, why am I doing this? What is this doing to me? And is there a healthier alternative? And that was one of the products I created was the Relax Plus is how can I kind of take the edge off? I think people were kind of yeah. hooped up, stressed, a lot going on. I know the time I was a bankruptcy litigator, so every company was freaking out. So my 100-hour weeks turned into 100-something hour weeks. And um, it was busy, but I was like, obviously, drinking two to three beers every night is not good for you, and it's not healthy. And so one of the first products was um, that I created was an alcohol replacement, and that was the Relax Plus. It was how can you kind of take the edge off without a lot of the negative side effects of alcohol. And um, that was the Relax Plus. But um, shortly afterwards, um, I would say about a year after that is when I really started diving into trying to create a product that you could actually drink. Because people mm -hmm. love Relax Plus, but some of the feedback we were getting is, well, I, I take one. Um, I might go to a happy hour. I might go to a party. But everyone has a beer in their hand. Everyone has a glass of wine. And I feel like I'm missing it. Or just eating one gummy. It's like I'm, I, I want to eat another. And people, and one thing we realize is people were missing just that social aspect or that just human nature of just holding something in their hand and sipping on something in a social setting. So when you think about it, how do people socialize? Over beverages, almost always. You grab a coffee with someone. You cheers with champagne at weddings and celebratory events. There's always beverages in a lot of um, in a lot of activities that we attend regularly. And so we thought, okay, how can we create a product that is drinkable, but also very controllable? Because we understood going down the drink route, it's like, well, then if we have eight time type different types of edibles, does that mean we need eight different types of beverages? Because we've created products and we always said we'll create products for different times of day, different experiences. That's much harder to do on the beverage side. Um, so that's when uh, uh, after just kicking around a bunch of ideas, we're like, well, why don't we create a product that allows our customers, as we say, to be the creator? And that's when the buzz drops were born. Um, basically a flavorless, um, low dose uh, serving of CBD and THC kind of to mirror the effects of wine, as we say, but without the negative side effects and to give our customers the ability to socialize with a beverage, but also heavily control how much they consume. We kept it as light as possible because um, our thing is, I would say a beginner serving is two and a half milligrams. Tons of people will argue with me on that. There's tons of people that be like, oh, I don't feel anything until I hit 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams. Um, but I think everyone should always start at the lowest level. Um, cause I think most people look at this product as you're either high or you're not high. And we're trying to show that it, you don't need to be high to enjoy this product. And I think you could really feel the subtle effects, and enjoy this product without getting to that level. So mm -hmm. we created the buzz drops in a very, in a very approachable stackable way so that it is approachable for all our customers and can, um, give them that ability to really control how much they consume. And you said flavorless. Is that yeah. true? <laughs> so yes. this is um, my thing about, this is my thing about THC products or, or CBD products. I, for me, I've never tasted one that I can't feel like I taste the, the cannabis in it. Yeah. So this one, you do not taste the cannabis at all. You taste the most subtle. It's not like if you sip water, you're like, this isn't water but it's very close. It will not impact the flavor of your drink um, at all. And that's we removed that kind of like that earthy cannabis um, taste. Cause that's another thing we actually, what's fun is we did um, release and we do seasonal releases. Uh, we created this, these caramels um, that do taste like the plant. There are only product that really tastes like the plant. And we found um, a small percentage of our customer base obsessed. Absolutely. Of course. Best. Yeah. But a big portion. Nope. Tastes too much like the plant. I love caramels, but I don't like the taste of the plant. So we found that was interesting. People either loved it or hate it. There was no middle ground with them at all. Interesting. Very interesting. 
Hey, it's Molly, and I just want to talk with you for a minute about Sunnyside. I know I talk about Sunnyside and have been talking about Sunnyside for, wow, two years now. And I want to let you know that that is because of not only the results that I see my clients get, but because I know the people at Sunnyside and I know how committed they are to making a product that really delivers not only in terms of results, but in terms of user experience. They recently launched an Android version of the Sunnyside app. And inside the app, there's new upgrades and ways to support you that really are defined by the user experience. And that is just something that I really appreciate about them. I know you can trust who they are as a company, and that's really important to me. I would love for you to check it out. Go to sunnyside.co slash molly to get started with a 15-day free trial today. I want to hear a little bit more about the ingredients and and kind of like when you decide to do this, thankfully, I guess, or I don't know if it's thankful for you, but you're you're come with a legal background. So you probably had to figure out some of this stuff. And I, I was interested on your website because of course, another thing that people will want to ask and want to know is like, well, can you ship them to me? Like you can't ship alcohol across the country. So, you know, that's not something that you're, that you can do. So talk to me about that and how you navigated that when you were building this company. Yeah. So, uh, and that's also another point where we're constantly e- explaining and educating customers because most most people don't realize you can ship THC in the mail. It just okay. needs to be derived from a specific plant. So what's interesting, so in 2018, um, Congress um, renewed the, the farm bill. So every four years, except uh, more recently, uh, the farm bill right now got kicked another year. So uh, it was supposed to be renewed last September. Uh, We'll see what happens this September, which is actually a a major, um, be a major month for this industry because so in 2018, Congress basically legalized all cannabis up to 0.3% THC. It's just legally, they call that form of cannabis hemp. And then they call the form of cannabis that is over 0.3% Delta 9 THC to be more specific uh, is marijuana. So as we all know, marijuana is illegal federally, um, but legal on a state by state basis. Um, and more and more states are legalizing. But of course, it's federally illegal. So you cannot cross state lines with marijuana. And marijuana, again, is basically um, cannabis products that are over that 0.3% limit. So 0.3% does not seem like a lot. But what Congress didn't really account for is that hemp prices would come down and that companies would be extracting um, CBD, but then would be left with all this THC. And then um, companies realize if you take that THC, you infuse it into something that weighs a lot, like like an edible or drinks, you can um, actually get a potent amount of THC. Um, So now as long as it's under that 0.3% limit, it falls under the 2018 Farm Bill, and we can ship it uh, nationwide. Um, so the Farm Bill basically says, hey, states, you cannot interfere with interstate trade of these products. Um, so it basically made cannabis products um, the ability for companies to reach the consumer, which I think is phenomenal in the sense that now you can educate. When you only have on the marijuana side, yes, there uh, states are... Um, legalizing dispensaries. But if you only have a handful of places in the state that are controlled by a handful of companies, educating the customer becomes much more difficult. Um, So this industry, what most people don't realize is um, you can, yeah, basically you can order THC products online with no issue. The thing is, though, now states um, are enacting their own legislation. So uh, these products are not legal in all states. It is constantly changing. It is changing weekly. Um, There's a lot of lobbying going on in each and every state uh, because of this. Um, And what's interesting and kind of sad, because I think we should all work together, is uh, it's really the marijuana industry fighting the hemp industry when they're both growing the same exact plant, they just have different legal definitions. Uh, so of course, marijuana wants uh, to eliminate the hemp industry and then hemp, hemp industry just wants to um, 
basically keep going as we are. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. And I think I read on your website, like if somebody's ordering something and they're going to, it's not legal or, or whatever, you will let them know. Like if we're going to have an issue or you shouldn't, you know, whatever you will say, did you know that you can't, <laughs> this, this isn't supposed to come to you or whatever, something like that. Yeah. And yeah. And we're constantly updating on the back end and controlling what states you can order from and whatnot. Gotcha. Tell me more about where the, the Nama brand. So what's the name mean and how did you, you know, where did this come from? The, the, just the branding in terms of that. Yeah. So, um, so this one I'd actually, so I'd credit my wife. So, uh, long story short. Um, so she's an attorney as well. And, um, we said, uh, we lived when we lived in Brooklyn, we actually, we lived above a gym and in the gym, they had this beautiful yoga studio and they would offer hot yoga on Friday afternoons. And we'd always schedule and try to make it. I forget if the class was at like seven or seven 30, but, um, I'd never make it. I'd make, I maybe made it like once in a while. I'd always be stuck at work and be like, sorry, I'm not making. But the few times I made it, I'd leave just on cloud, not feeling yeah. great. Hot yoga is awesome. And I was like, <laughs> how can you kind of recreate this experience in a gummy? And I, I'd also at the same time being like, well, these, like this feeling is similar to like the feeling I get when I consume some of these products. And um, at the same time, I was yeah trying to think of a name for this. And uh, I knew I wanted a short name, something just on the branding side, the short name, uh, easier to remember. Um, and then also just packaging. I was already thinking package design and whatnot, how well it looks. So I was like, I know that name. I want to make the name just like four or five, six letters, nothing more than that. Um, and then my wife's like, well, what about Nama? Short for Namaste. You would say how great these products are and how great when we'd go to hot yoga, you leave feeling, yeah. doesn't it make sense? And that's where the name was born. I love so it. Uh, yeah, short. it does. And I love the fact that you're a, a, somebody after my own heart because your branding or your packaging is all in uh gradient in ombre kind of colors that come up, you know, from one color to the next. And I love that. That's one of my favorite color scheme. I mean, I just love that effect. So they look really great. Um, okay. And actually yeah. just on that point, one thing we try now, it's way too hard to do, but it, um, our early packaging was basically supposed to kind of mirror the time of day. Yeah. Yeah. So I gotcha. Time is like, yeah. Sun rising, the relaxed sun setting, the relaxed plus, which is like blue skies, good vibes yeah. and the, the sleep, obviously the sun going down. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're really, they're, they're really, it's, it is a good looking, it's good looking packaging. So congrats on that. Well, Chris, this is just, I mean, I love this conversation. What year did you start and how do you see your growth going from here? How has it been in terms of finding customers growing? Has it been pretty consistent? Yes, I would say actually a lot of our growth has come in the last year. And I think some of this is also just part of it was also my approach to running a business because I'd never run a business before when I left my job and uh, everything was was new to me. So um, the first year was really getting grounding and just really getting customer feedback. I tried to do, and really in the first two years, I tried to be in front of the customer as much as possible. This was doing pop-ups, farmer's markets, anything to get to the customer and speak to the customer face by face. And I learned a ton, mm -hmm. so much. What worked, what didn't work, what people were looking for, what people didn't like, um, we got to sample, um, we'd even sample, uh, I'd get my, my partner manufacturer, uh, to ship us samples that had, um, nothing in it also just to test flavors. And, um, that I found was just gave us so much knowledge to then, uh, really scale things quite a bit in the last year. So we've grown, um, since last August, we've actually grown, um, over 2000%. Um, so quite a bit. Our team's expanded. We've gone from uh, really just me to uh, now we're a team of over 20. Um, wow. So we, we've grown quite a bit. And um, and yeah, things have been great. I think um, something that has helped a lot is also our messaging. I mm -hmm. think breaking the stigma and showing people again that these products are not... Um, that there's no need to get high when you consume mm -hmm. these products and yeah. that the products when consumed in lower amounts are much more beneficial 
I think one thing that has really helped because it's very hard to um, explain a feeling to a customer without the mm -hmm. person having felt it. And to do it with words never does it justice. And I think one thing we really try to do is explain these feelings in analogous scenarios. And we do it in creative ways with our messaging. Um, and I think that has made these products much more approachable and people more open to trying them. And I think that paired with our level of education, for example, every single order gets a product guide and a dosing guide. Um, yeah. We run out of dosing guides. There's been once or twice where we didn't have them for two days. I'd say, we're not shipping any order. Let's wait until they're in. Um, and knock on wood, we've never had a customer that's overdone it. And I think that's a big thing with this industry is just ensuring that your customers are always consuming the right amount and the product that's right for them. And um, I think that's helped a lot because I know there's a lot of companies out there, especially in the hemp and marijuana industry, and they're chasing just high THC. And the number of customers that come to us that are like, I tried a cannabis product once. I thought the world was ending. I said, never again. A friend mm -hmm. said, you had to try your product. And I'm like, wow, I love these. I thought I'd never like these. I love these. And I think that's been um, very, very uh, crucial to our growth is just really spending that time to educate the customer and help the customer find what's truly right for them instead of just pushing what we think is right and what we think is the strongest product. Um, because really the strongest product is not good for the majority of people. I love that. And I think why your messaging resonated, alcohol is dose dependent. So you can enjoy it. And from my perspective, we talk about it and very sciencey over here on the Alcohol Minimalist podcast, we talk about uh, not going over a blood alcohol content of 0.055%. That's really the the when you look at alcohol, the therapeutic dose is from zero to 0.055%. 0 That's a very low dose. It is the, you know, basically the equivalent of one drink for most people and, and some people, bigger people, maybe two. And that is what I hear you telling me is that these products that you have created, it is also very dose dependent and that the, the, the lower your amount, the, you know, having a minimalist approach to consuming, if you're going to try THC, at least the THC, I don't know about CBD. Is it the same apply when you are talking about levels of CBD or is it a little, is it, is it more the THC? Yeah, definitely much more the THC. So CBD, much more forgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, someone like if someone were to consume a, let's say 50 milligrams of CBD um, and let's say they have no tolerance, they'll probably just get tired and like, and just maybe want to sit on the couch. Um, if someone consumes 50 milligrams of THC and again, don't have much tolerance, um, they're probably calling 911 and wanting right. to go to the hospital, think the world's ending and their head's going to explode. Um, they're going right. to have an awful panic attack and it's not going to go well. But actually what's interesting is those products work in synergy. And uh, this is actually another myth that we try to combat a lot is a lot of people think CBD eliminates THC. Um, when really CBD works in synergy with THC to make it more a better experience. It actually takes away the negative parts because, yeah, there's negative parts of THC. If you consume too much, you're going to get paranoid. And you have to find what I would say is your perfect dose, which for everyone, it's different. For one person might be two milligrams, the next person 10, another person could be 50. But the second you exceed your own perfect dose, um, that's when all the negatives come out. But actually mm -hmm. CBD can kind of add that a little bit and reduce those just in case you do go a little bit over CBD will kind of rein it in and make it a much more um, fuller. And as what I say, like smoother experience. And as I would say, also, there's a reason all these cannabinoids are grown together in the plant. Um, of course, humans have now taken out um, and dissected and removed each cannabinoid cannabinoid individually. And you see that in the mar marijuana market is just how can we get the highest amount of THC when really um, it's moving. The industry is very, very slowly moving. And I would say crawling to more of a full plant experience that kind of takes in consideration all the cannabinoids. Gotcha. Well, this is certainly uh, 
very educational for me. I can't wait to hear from uh, some from some of my listeners that check you out, but tell everybody where they can learn more about NAMA, where they can find you and how they can order. Yeah. So our, our website is namacv.com, um, but I highly recommend um, subscribing to our newsletter. So every um, two weeks, we we do uh, this newsletter called Sunday Clouds, um, and we try to keep it um, fun, but also informative. Like we'll add some awesome. little fun tidbits, but also educational. And we we try to throw whether it's something science based or something in there every two weeks. Um, so highly recommend that. And then also um, our blog. If you have questions, uh, our team, because our thing is just try to get as much information out there as possible and just help people um, kind of combat the stigma with this plan and just uh, uh, give people resources to educate themselves. Because I think one of the dilemmas with this industry is, um, well, now you, I, I guess some schools you can, but if you wanted to take a course on cannabis in school, not <laughs> Where 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 do people go to find information on it? There, there aren't as many resources. And yeah, tons of people are doing amazing research, but we're still at the tip of the iceberg. And I, I think having having that canvas textbook it doesn't really exist. Um, so having a place just to go where you can get your questions answered. So um, our blog has quite a lot of information. And of course, our team, um, everyone knows this plant inside and out. So we're always, if anyone has any questions, uh, we're, we're here to help and answer them. Awesome. And of course, on all the socials too, right? So Instagram, Facebook, all TikTok, all that, you can find Nama CBD folks. Chris Whalen, it has been a real pleasure to talk with you and learn more about Nama. You're speaking my language because like I told you, I am not somebody who I don't like that feeling. So I am eager to try something and not have a negative experience with it. With it. And so this gives me that kind of hope. I would like to be able to, to see if this works. And especially for that relaxation sleep factor, I think it'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks and uh, keep us up to date on what's going on in the industry and all the best in continuing to grow. 2000%, that's a big number. So I I don't know if, oh, I guess I should have asked that. In terms of manufacturing, you do that all here in the States and you are able to oversee it or tell me what that looks like. Yeah, so manufacturing. Um, so we have some, we have manufactured some of our products in-house um, and we have several partner manufacturers. The reason we okay. don't have one manufacturer is because my thing is I know um, a manufacturer might be amazing at making one product, but they might not necessarily be the best at making another. And uh, that's how we decide is we basically, based on the product. Um, so even before I dove into this industry, I made a list of hundreds and hundreds of farmers and partner manuf- potential partner manufacturers, called them all to do diligence on every single one, harassed them for lab reports, processes, <laughs> everything you could think of. And then also just source samples and found what is their expertise? Is there a product I'd want to release in that realm? And then that's how we chose our partners. So depending if it's our caramels, we have one partner. If it's our chocolates, it's another. Buzz drops, it's another. And then we have two um, edible partner manufacturers. Oh, um, wow. So they take our formulas um, and, uh, and yeah, run, run with it. And they've been, yeah, amazing partners uh, helping us a lot, especially over the last several months uh, with our growth. They've been amazing. Like, for example, our Buzz Drops, um, our partner manufacturer, actually this past Sunday, um, their entire team was in there on Sunday. They did a full day, packed up a, a truck at 6 p.m. and um, and they were here. That was all the way in Florida. They were here in uh, New York by uh, 3 p.m. Uh, just so we could get all our orders out. Um, and uh, so we have some really amazing partners. And um, yeah, everything sourced, uh, grown in the U.S. Uh, we have great uh, occasion. We even do a small batch, like limited edition releases where we'll team up with a really small farm and uh, source our, our uh, hemp from them. And uh, and yeah. So uh, constantly changing who who our partner is, but our thing is just find who does it the best partner with them and then, uh, and then uh, share it with our customers. Awesome. Okay. That'll be the final word. Chris Whalen, thank you so much for joining me today. And I can't wait to share this with the alcohol minimalists. If if people have questions, they can just reach out to your team and um, check it out folks. NamaCBD.com. Thank you so much, Molly. 
Thanks, Chris. Hey, thanks for listening to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. Take something you learned from this week's episode and put it into action. Changing your drinking habits and creating a peaceful relationship with alcohol is 100% possible. You can stop worrying, stop feeling guilty about over drinking and become someone who desires alcohol less. I work with people in three ways. You can learn about them over at www.bollywatts.com slash work with me. Or better yet, reach out to me directly. It's molly at mollywatts.com. We'll jump on a call and discuss what's best for you. This podcast is really just the beginning of our conversation. Let's keep it going.